Who ran to the door of Enlil? Nooks who opened his door, took up his weapons, and went before Enlil in the assembly of all the gods. He bowed and stood before the before and told the message. Father Anu, your counselor warrior Enlil, your chamberlain in nurture, and your canal control Enuji have sent me to say, who is in charge of the rabble? So it repeats itself here. Who declared war? I guess they're not answering, so they're asking this question again. And Lil says, every single one of us, gods declare war. We have put a stop to the digging. Now, now this is where the Ejiji is speaking here. They said, we have put a stop to the digging. In other words, we're, we're done doing the slave work. We're not working anymore. Do you notice the trend here about when, when you enslave somebody, even if you don't, even if you don't call them a slave, when you abuse somebody's natural living rights, at some point, it might take thousands of years, but at some point, the people will rebel. I don't care what planet you're from, the people will rebel. He said, we have put a stop to the digging. The load is excessive. It is killing us. Our work is too hard. The trouble is too much. So every single one of us gods has agreed to complain to Enlil. See, they call themselves gods. Did you hear that? Every single one of us gods, they didn't call themselves slaves. They recognize that they're gods, that they're powerful. Every one of us gods has agreed to complain to Enlil, who's the most evil one of them all. Nuxu took his weapons, went and returned to Enlil. My Lord, you sent me. And I went and I explained. Every single one of us gods declare war, they said. We have put a stop to the digging. The load is excessive. It is killing us. Our work is too hard. The trouble is too much. So every single one of us gods has agreed to complain to Enlil. So he repeated the speech to Enlil. Enlil listened to that speech. His tears flowed. Oh, this guy's got a little compassion now all of a sudden. Enlil spoke guardedly, addressed the warrior anew. Noble one, take a decree with you to the sky. Oh, with you to the sky. He's telling his dad to get back up to the ship. <laughs> and send a decree up there. Show your strength while the Anunnaki are sitting before you. Call up one god and let them cast him for destruction. You see, he thought he was crying because he was sad that the people were working too hard. Nah, he was crying because, you know what? I love these people, but man, you know what? I'm gonna have to destroy him anyway. This guy's a, a psychopathic narcissist. <laughs> this guy's a psychopathic narcissist. And that shows up in the biblical text as well, right? When he destroys the Tower of Babel and all, that's a whole other podcast. But it was Enlil that destroyed the Tower of Babel in the biblical text in the Old Testament. How do I know that? What's well, in ancient tablets? that They just copied the story. The guy's just an, the absolute ultimate narcissist, psychopathic narcissist, by the way. I hope you guys share this video. We got 2,100 in here now. Check this out. He says, check this out. He says, uh, Anu made his voice heard and spoke to the gods, his brothers. What are we complaining of? Their work was indeed too hard. He's like, Enlil, come on, man. Are you serious? Like, you want me to, you want me to blow up this city from, sky, from the space, from my ship, from the sky? Like, for real, dude? Like, these people are suffering, man. Like you, you put too much work on them. I mean, it ain't a mystery. Like you, you're busting their backs. He said the work was indeed too hard. The trouble was too much. Every day the earth resounded. The warning signal was loud enough. We kept hearing the noise. He's saying they've been telling us this. They've been complaining to us. They've been pissed off and angry. They've been letting us know they're overworked. The, the work, the, the load is too hard to bear. And we keep ignoring them. And now, here they are. They're ready to go to battle against us because we didn't listen. Do these sound like the gods that created the universe? They sound like people to me. I'm just saying. I'm just asking for a friend because <laughs> these are the ones that are in the biblical text. Then there's a couple of missing phrases inside of this tablet is broken. Um, while the Anunnaki were sitting before you, and while Bilit Ili, the womb goddess, is present, call up one and cast him for destruction. 
and Nu made his voice heard and spoke to Nuxu. Nuxu, open your door, take your weapons, bow in the assembly of the great gods, and then stand. And tell them your father Anu, your counselor warrior Enlil, your chamberlain Inerta, and your canal controller Inuji have sent me to say, who is in charge of the rabble? Who will be in charge of the battle? Which guard started the war? A rabble was running around my door. When Nuxu heard this, he took up his weapons, bowed in the assembly of the great gods, then stood and told them, your father Anu, your counselor warrior Enlil, your chamberlain Inerta, and your canal controller Inuji have sent me to say, who is in charge of this rabble? I mean, it kind of repeats it there you know, a little bit, but that's just, that's how it is, right? It's pretty interesting. Ea, that's Enki, made his voice heard and spoke to the gods, his brothers. Why are we blaming them? Enki says. Why are we blaming them? Enki is the same person who is considered to be the serpent that showed up in the Garden of Eden and talked to Adam and Eve. Same exact person. And when his brother shows up, uh, and Lil, who, a.k.a. Yahweh, he's pissed off because these people have gained some damn sense. The apple that Eve ate wasn't an apple like off of a tree, a physical apple like a piece of fruit. It was knowledge. What does apple represent? Knowledge. They gained knowledge by talking to Enki that they, had, they were self-aware, that they became, they were sentient beings, that they were on the same level as the Anunnaki, and that they weren't animals. And that this was a laboratory and they were being experimented on for mating purposes to duplicate and create a slave race. Enki had his voice heard and spoke to the gods' brothers. Why are you blaming them? Their work was too hard. Their trouble was too much. Every day the earth resounded. The warning signal was loud enough. We kept hearing the noise. There it is. Bilit Ely, the womb goddess, is present. Let her create a pre, pre primeval man. Got to read the way this is um, broken down from the Sumerian. Let her create primeval man. So this is where, now we've reached a point where Enki is like, okay, either we're going to go to battle against this mob of angry EGG and lose because they outnumber us, or we got to come up with a solution. And we better come up with one pretty damn quick. We better come up with a solution pretty damn quick or it's going to be all over for us this will be our last stand right here right so enki says you know i have an idea let the womb goddess create a primeval man this is the first instance of engaging and genetically modifying the existing hominid on this planet that they used to at that point were leaving alone they came here about four hundred fifty thousand years ago and they worked for 250,000 of those 450,000 years themselves when you add up all the shards in the ancient text, right? And then 200,000 years ago, they decided to do this primeval man and make them bear the load. And guess what? When does modern science say Homo sapiens showed up on this planet? 200,000 years ago. Just go to any college book and you'll read it and you'll find out that's what the answer is. You think that's a coincidence? By Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson.